Hello, everyone. In this lecture, we're going to talk about uh, the new developments in uh, kidney carcinoma, the important ones that you should be aware of. Uh, the lecture will uh, revolve around these uh, five key themes that uh, we will address the most important prognostic factors in renal cancer. The WHO I subgrade, sarcomatoid and rhabdoid differentiation, tumor necrosis, the issues pertaining to pathological stage, and some new morphologic types that will be likely included in the new WHO classification. I will not talk about lymphovascular invasion, but you should be aware of that it has emerged as an important prognosticator, particularly lymphovascular invasion in the small vessels in some recent studies. You're all familiar with the Furman grading system. It has been around for almost half a century. You know that there are four grades, G1 to G4. However, you're also aware that there is a grade heterogeneity and that the grade is typically based on the worst areas, such as illustrated in these examples. However, there are issues pertaining to the nuclear uh, grade. First, it represents a combination of the nuclear size, shape, and the nucleolar size as well. The size of the worst area was not well defined. It was not clear whether it pertains only to clear cell versus other types such as papillary, chromophobe, etc. And thus, uh, a new modification was introduced some years ago uh, known as a nucleolar grading system based primarily on the nucleolar size and it was validated in clear cell renal cell carcinoma initially. The worst area was defined as times 100 magnification. So WHO grading system uh, has also four grades. Grade one uh, represents uh, cells with absent or inconspicuous nucleoli. They look like lymphocytes at times 400 magnification. If the nucleoli are distinctly visible at times 400, that's nuclear grade two. Nuclear grade, nucleoli uh, grade three is when the nucleoli are distinctly and easily visible at times 400, again, to reiterate, at times uh, 40 or 400 magnification field. And grade four represents extreme nucleus pleomorphism, multinuclear giant cells, as well as rhabdoid and sarcomatoid differentiation, which was not previously included there. Uh, it is important to note that uh, this grading system has been validated for clear cell and papillary renal cancer only, but it shouldn't be applied to other types, for instance, chromophore renal. In this lecture, I'll be talking about selected differential diagnoses in kidney pathology. And probably amongst all G organs, uh, there's been the greatest changes in the last few years in new entities and changes in, in how we call various entities that are established in renal pathology. And I'll cover some of those uh, today. So the first will be differential diagnoses of renal cell carcinoma with clear cytoplasm, which is probably one of the bulk of the tumors that we deal with. So the first uh, differential is clear cell papillary renal cell tumor versus clear cell RCC and papillary RCC. Now you may know this first entity is clear cell papillary renal cell carcinoma, but as we'll go into the lecture, I'll explain why uh, there's a movement to just call these tumors, not carcinomas. So clear cell papillary renal cell tumor is not clear cell carcinoma and it's not papillary renal cell carcinoma. It's its own distinct entity. Um, it's also been called tubular papillary renal cell carcinoma initially because, as I'll show, it has a very prominent tubular component. The most uh, striking in many of these tumors is tubular formation, less so papillary and less so kind of little nests that look like clear cells. So what we typically see at low power in clear cell papillary renal cell tumor are these tubules, a little bit of maybe papillary formation, and it's clear cells. When you go to higher power, again, very bland looking nuclei. They're always grade one nuclei, no atypia. Um, clear cytoplasm, uh, little tubules, again, slight little papillary formation. And then a very characteristic finding in clear cell papillary renal cell tumor, not diffusely throughout the tumor, but typically you'll find it somewhere in the tumor, is this reverse polarity where the nuclei are on the top and you have subnuclear vacuoles. So as we'll discuss, this is characteristic of 
clear-cell renal cell tumor, but not pathic mnemonic, meaning we can see that in, for example, clear-cell renal cell carcinoma focally. This is the classic branching uh, and tubular pattern. And one of the things that's, again, very typical of clear cell papillary renal tumor is the tubules often have this very blunt, squared off edge to them. So this is typical morphology, predominantly tubular, less so papillary. Here at higher power, these squared off little blunt edge tubules, clear cytoplasm, bland nuclei with a little bit of papillations as well. In this case, we have more of a tubular component on the top and more of a prominent papillary component on the bottom. So they can vary in terms of the mixture and which one may predominant. Although, as I mentioned before, most of these are going to be more tubular predominant. Here at higher power, the papillary lesion. Again, bland cytology. A um, little bit of reverse polarity seen here even in the papillary areas. Uh, hello. So uh, this is, again, uh, Sean Williamson, and this is my third and last uh, topic in the course today. Thank you again for, for joining. Uh, again, I have no disclosures relevant to this, this presentation. And for this one, we'll focus on testicular tumors, some of the most common uh, diagnostic challenges, and a few updates to the classification. So we'll, we'll try to talk about most common diagnostic problems. If there's time, I'll try to squeeze in a bit about staging and then uh, cover a few other tumor types involving the testis that can be uh, mimic uh, testicular primary tumors. So uh, what's important about this topic? There is clinically, there can be some difference in how patients are managed between a seminoma and a non-seminomatous non germ cell tumor. And the language here can be somewhat confusing. In, in clinical terms, when we say a seminomatous tumor, that means a pure seminoma. And when clinicians refer to a non-seminoma, that, that, that would represent a germ cell tumor with any component other than seminoma. So even if the tumor has a substantial amount of seminoma, if it has anything else, it would be considered a non-seminomatous tumor for, for treatment purposes. Um, the, the treatment can be different between seminoma and non-seminomatous tumors, especially with respect to radiation as a primary treatment, although that's becoming, in my experience, less common in modern practice to use radiation as a primary treatment, with most patients being either uh, treated via surveillance or uh, the same chemotherapy uh, for either seminoma and, and non-seminomatous germ cell tumors. However, a non-germ cell tumor, such as, for example, a sex cord stromal tumor, uh, would have very different treatment, whereas germ cell tumors are very sensitive to specific chemotherapy, sex cord stromal tumors have really no specific therapy that is um, efficacious for them, and so resection of all, all disease for a malignant one um, is the main form of treatment. And then, of course, metastases of some other cancer or lymphoma uh, would be treated in the way of those cancers. So differentiating these testicular tumor types can be important for, for clinical management. And then finally, testicular tumors are, are infrequent. It's not a common type of cancer, uh, but almost all surgical pathologists have the opportunity to see them at least occasionally because uh, the surgery to remove a testicular tumor is, is a rather um, simple surgery that can be done almost anywhere. So uh, even if you don't see a lot of these, there's a good chance that you'll be seeing some. So first, let's talk about the, the precursor or the in situ lesion of uh, testicular adult germ cell tumors. This was previously known as intratubular germ cell neoplasia unclassified type or IGNU. Uh, other authors had used terminology such as carcinoma in situ or, or testicular intraepithelial neoplasia. However, these are actually misnomers because germ cells are not epithelial cells and so calling them carcinoma or intraepithelial is actually not entirely accurate. So for the uh, new WHO in 2016, the term germ cell neoplasia in situ, GCNIS, was agreed upon as this sort of is a compromise between uh, carcinoma in situ, which is a misnomer, and intratubular germ cell neoplasia unclassified, which it could be potentially confusing with the word unclassified in there, suggesting that this is some sort of weird or unusual uh, lesion, whereas we know that it's the presumptive precursor uh, that's very common to uh, adult malignant testicular germ cell tumors.